tonight to be served and refreshed by introducing Father Belgrave Pelé of St. Mary's Episcopal. God is good. All the time. Can I hear you? God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Look to your right and say to that person, God is good. God is good. Today we are all here from different faiths and different culture. We come because we serve one God. The God who created the world, the God who created the earth. And so we are here in this multicultural city. There's no city in the world like New York City. And there is no police force in the world like our police force. And I'm going to come back to the new thing. There is no place like the South Bronx, the 40th precinct. And I thank God. And I thank God for my country. Amen. Amen. There we go. So I would like all of us, as we continue to serve God in peace, in love, and in unity, we all are together. Let us work together. And as we work together, I just would like us to bow our heads and then going to say a prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, our only Savior, the Prince of Peace, deliver thy people from, we beseech thee, from all prejudice and contention. And whatsoever else may hinder us from all godly union and concord. And as it is one body and one spirit and one hope of our, our calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. So we may be all of one heart and of one mind, united one holy bond of truth and peace and faith and love. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Please welcome Bishop Angelo Rosario from the Church of God's Children. Let me, let me see what I say. <laughs> There's nothing greater than prayer. Prayer changes things. Prayer is not a complaint. Prayer is a reverence, a reverence to our Heavenly Father. There's just one Father, Creator of heaven and earth. Prayer isn't a house or a car or a brand new pair of shoes. Prayer is asking the wisdom of He that created the heavens and the earth. Psalm 122, 6 says that we should pray for the, for the peace of Israel. Mm -hmm. That one when Israel was still in his power and the King David was there. When we pray for the peace of Israel, we pray for the peace of the world. But there cannot be any peace if there's no love. The commandments teaches us that we must respect our Heavenly Father, love God of all the things, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's when peace comes into our hearts and then we find solutions to the problems. If God is peace. My peace I give you, my peace I leave, not like the world gives it, do I give it to you? The peace of the world is different from the peace that God gives us. That's right. Because we build a relationship. And what has been broken through the centuries, since the beginning of man's time in the garden, was the relationship of conversation between Adam and God. When Adam was walking through the garden and he fell, God said, where are thee, Adam? And he said, I heard your voice and I hid. Communication broke. The relationship between father and son broke. 
I want to finish by letting you know that if we all pray together as one people that we have done this day, calling out to our Creator, God will hear our prayers and change our communities. He will send angels to help us. If He said, when you pray, He brings back a relationship between man and God the Father. Our Father who art in heaven, thou kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. When we build that relationship back with our Heavenly Father and our families, with our wives and husbands and children, that makes a difference in our community. And I finish by saying to you, I want to burn the village. I want to develop to know that we are a city that sits up on top of a hill. And a city has new ideas, new principles. Mm -mm. We are together better, as my brother said before, tonight. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And your neighbor is the police officers. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Not we could create love and not war. Because without love, it's impossible to please God. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to introduce Pastor Reggie Stutzman from Real Life Church. Yep. Where'd he go? Representing Hunts Point. Hey! Hey! Four one. Hey! <laughs> I want to read to you from the book of Luke, the tenth chapter. Hmm. Jesus was asked, "Who is my neighbor?" And he replied, "A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now, by chance, a priest was going down that road." And when he saw him, he passed by on, on the other side. Mm -hmm. And so likewise, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by mm -hmm. on the other side. Yep. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. He went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he set him on his own animal brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper, saying, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, I will repay you when I come back. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And he said, The one who showed him mercy. And Jesus said to him, You, and go do likewise. I'm here today to tell you that the one next to you, the one in your building, the one on the corner, the one you agree with and the one you disagree with, the one of the same faith and the one of different faith is your neighbor. And Jesus says, who is the greatest? The one who shows mercy. And I would challenge us here in this room <laughs> that we are responsible to showing mercy to those around us. How do we bring unity to our city? By serving. By serving. By serving. My prayer tonight is that we would have eyes to see the needs that are around us. Mother Teresa said, if you can't feed a hundred people, you can always feed one. What can you do tonight? How can you serve? Heavenly Father, I ask you that you would unite us by serving one another. That we would see the needs of people around us, whether they be poor or naked, homeless, elderly. Father, of whatever community, whatever belief, we would serve them with love and compassion. 
That we would be a city of mercy and a city of compassion. Let it begin here in the Bronx tonight. For Lord, who is the greatest among you? The one who shows mercy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. It is my pleasure to introduce Pandit Vishnu Sukhul of the Vishnu Mandir Hindu Temple. Tonight I'm very happy to be with you and I want, I want to tell you that I do learn very important things here. God is one. But we call him by many names. In the Hindu Temple, Every Sunday, at the end of the service, we chant a special prayer. And I want to chant that prayer tonight, but first, I'll give the meaning, though I might change a couple words only. Let there be good to all. Let all be free from sickness. Let all see good, and let none suffer. Let all be happy and fearless. Let there be sympathy for each other, and success for all work. Let there be prosperity, and I will say it now to the police commissioner, and to all the policemen of the city of New York who protect the people every day. Let there be happiness in the heavenly regions and in the three worlds. Let us and other beings have peace, creator and sustainer of the world, Thou encourage godliness and establish peace among the people. Who is thy friends today? Let they be in peace. And who is thy enemies today? Let they be in peace. And this is the Hindi chant to cover that ground. Sarvesha mangalam bhuyat Sarve santu niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschi Dukha Bhag Bhavet Nandantu Sarva Bhutani Niratakani Santuja Priti Rastu Parasparam Siddhi Rastu Chakarmana Yashya Chamandvishti Loke Asmin so api bhadrani pashyantu. And we say four words at the end, and everybody can say after me Om, Om. Shanti, 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 O. Really, Shanti means peace. And if you want peace, you must have peace first within us. May there be peace and happiness to all our officers. In particular, our wonderful commissioner. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Heartbeat tour from the Sikh Cultural Society. Please step forward for your reflections. Good evening. Namaskar. Adab. Sasri Akal. And slow. Well, actually, I'm the last speaker, so I will take my time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just look around us. Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikh religion, more than 500 years ago, he said about the women and how you can condemn someone who gave the birth even to the kings. He also said that if you love him, the God, then how you can hate his creation? Just because of his looks, color, greed, or perceptions. We are here today because those people who put their life in front of our life to save our lives, not only to thank them, but also to, when we go home and pray, pray for them. 
We personally, being a sick, really honored to have the commissioner who allowed for the first time to serve the six with our articles of faith. Sikhism is inclusive. Our one of the holiest place, Golden Temple, the foundation stone of that place was laid down by a Muslim saint. Our Our holy book contains the writings of not only the Sikh gurus, but the saints from other faiths, Hindus, Muslims, other faiths. So when we look at that, when we go to pray, we pray for inclusiveness, not exclusiveness. And at the end, I'm just going to read one line which starts for us the prayers. Ikyamkar Satnam Kartapurak Nirpal Nirvan Akal Murat Ajuni Sabam Gurpashad Japu. One God who never dies, was never born, without enmity, with equality, and for everybody to respect and love. Thank you. Thank you. It is indeed my great honor to introduce the Police Commissioner of the City of New York, the Honorable <laughs>
You took it because you want to do, you want to do good, you want to do what's right, and you want to make a difference. And believe, believe me, you do each and every day, yeah. each and every time you put that uniform on. So no more than that. As I stand at this podium, I, I feel good. Muslims, Christians, Buddhists, Hindus, Sikhs, got it all covered. <laughs> <laughs> and I, and I, know, I know so many of them. Thank you for what you do for the Bronx each and every day. Because you, you absolutely make this a, a great borough. So thank you for what you do. So I'm not going to go into uh, too many statistics, although statistics, each and every time you hear that, those numbers represent real people. But uh, I think it needs to be acknowledged what a good year 2016 was. Not, not for the NYPD, but, but for this great city. Uh, I've been in this business a long time and working on my 35th year. In 2016, I know, not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> 2016, homicides continue to go down. 335, still 335 too many. But just to put that in perspective, back in 1990, there were 2,200. Mm -hmm. Yep. Shootings are down, down 140. That's over 12 percent. The uh, action came in under 1,000, first time in the history of the city, at okay. 198. Again, to put that in perspective. In 1990, 5,000 shootings. Wow. And overall crime, those are the major crimes you always hear about, we're down another 4.1%. And none of that happens by accident. None of it. That happens as a result of the hard work of the men and women that stood up. All of our law enforcement partners, particularly the FBI, the U.S. Marshal Service, the DEA, and the ATF, they all make a major contribution to what we do in this city. And most of all, most of all, for our neighborhood policing program, it's thanks to the people in this room and the people in this great city to continue to make it safe. We have that, everybody in this room, not just the police department, we have that moral obligation to keep pushing crime down. And I know we can do it. And the way we do that is by working together and we do things like this. You know, without, uh, without the unity that uh, all the clergy spoke of, we're not gonna be able to continue to decrease crime. Now we know we know where the issues are, but no one knows better where the problems are than the people that live and work on those blocks. So with neighborhood policing, then we have cops in steady sectors. You have the opportunity to get to meet them. You have the NCOs, the neighborhood coordination officers. You get you get to meet them too. So it's the same cops in the same sectors every day. You have the opportunity to say hello. That's all. Sometimes that's all it takes. That's all it takes is a simple hello. And you know our cops are getting better at it. Sometimes it's not easy. And you see what's transpired in the city and this nation.